To take us through exactly the national security issues here, we welcome Republican Congressman from Texas, Mike McCall. He is now chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. So, Mr. Congressman, thank you so much for being with us. I guess my question Thanks, is there was a lot of speculation that this might have been sort of a test by the Chinese to see how our national defenses were doing. If it was a test, did we pass it? Well, I'm glad eventually it was shot down, but, but um, they were testing us. It was very provocative, a shot across the bow at the United States of America. Uh, they wanted a display of weakness, and I think to some extent they got that. I don't know why this wasn't shot down prior to it entering U.S. airspace uh, off the coast of Alaska. Uh, we have a classified briefing on Thursday, uh, and we have a lot of questions. Uh, particularly, did it transmit uh, messages back to Beijing uh, during a, its trip over the United States, uh, very sensitive areas that it crossed, and why do we wait so late to, to shoot it down? So you have questions, you'll need answers, and I don't want to get out of, over your skis, so mm -hmm. to speak, Congressman. But I wonder, yeah. right now, do you have any instinct about what might have to be changed to make sure that we don't have this sort of a situation again? Well, here's the, the kind of little secret. Uh, it's not really a secret. I mean, we have satellites, they have satellites. Uh, but a very low-orbiting balloon, spy balloon like this one, uh, the lower it is to the surface of the Earth, the more data can pick up, you know, in a very precise, precise manner. Um, and the interesting thing, David, to me is why, why did China do this a week before the Secretary of State's meeting with Chairman Xi, uh, knowing that this would provoke a response from the United States? I can only uh, conjecture that it was done to test us, to test our strength uh, going into this meeting, which, as you know, has been canceled now. I wonder, though, Congressman, if uh, to pick up on your point, whether it also may suggest something about President Xi and what kind of control he has over his military. Because a lot of China experts are saying they can't believe President Xi said, OK, let's do this right now. It's a good time to do it. I've, I've heard that analysis and I've, I've studied it. But I mean, honestly, I don't think anything goes by chance, something of this magnitude. You know, everything is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, by Chairman Xi. The military doesn't act independently of, of Chairman Xi. I just find that hard to believe that, that this happened without his knowledge. And I think it was probably as a direct result of a, a decision that, that he made. Well, I have a viewer writing in here. I'm going to ask the question, but then also add to it a bit. It basically says uh, he'd like you to explain why there's Republican outrage over this, if in fact it did happen under President Trump and nobody said anything or maybe they didn't even know. To maybe expand that out a little bit, is one of the lessons from this that there is plenty of room for improvement, whether you're a Republican or you're a Democrat when it comes to national security? You know, always. I, I don't think, you know, I treat national security as an American issue, not a partisan issue. It shouldn't be a partisan issue. We always have mistakes we can learn from that have happened under both Republican and Democratic administrations. Um, and this is not, this is certainly one of those. By all accounts, it appears that they've done this prior, but they've never done this at this low of an altitude. And I think that's what made it so provocative uh, in nature. Now, on a bipartisan level, I'm working on a resolution condemning uh, communist China for doing this. And I think it's important that uh, they hear from the United States Congress through the American people uh, that we condemn this action. It's not acceptable for the United States to have a low level spy balloon uh, go over this country. Interesting, in my home state of Texas, they, so many of my constituents had wished they'd been able to take a shot at the balloon <laughs> while traversing across my state. And we kind of wonder Montana uh, why they didn't, but but all kidding aside, you know. Yeah, I'm not sure I, a 30 out six makes it up 60,000 feet. I'm not <laughs> <Right>. sure, but. <laughs> well, yeah, and I, I hopefully they don't have surfaced air missiles in their backyard. But uh, <laughs> but having said that, I, I don't think it should have been allowed to go across our country, uh, taking spy images of our national security assets. Congressman, let me turn to a different part of the world, certainly national security, and that's Ukraine, because we get increasing reports now of the Russians really on the move forward, the offense over in eastern Ukraine. We hear from President Zelensky. It is, it is pretty serious stuff going on over there right now. Is there any need for us to do any further emergency funding for Ukraine right now? No, we have, we have the appropriations. It's a question of getting them the right military equipment at the right time. As you know, David, I've been <clears throat> critical of the administration's slow response, slow walking the weapon systems going in. And you're right, this is a critical time. Uh, Putin has replaced his general now with what would be his uh, chairman of Joint Chiefs equivalent. They are going to engage in a winter spring offensive in, in Ukraine, and Ukraini, uh, Ukrainians need all the weapons 
they can get to defend against that and provide a counter offensive. Uh, I'm glad the tanks are going in, uh, primarily the Leopard tanks from Germany and other allied nations. But what they really need now are really the surface to ground air support uh, vehicles, uh, aviation assets, but also the attackums, the long range artillery that can hit the Iranian drones that are in Crimea that are causing so much devastation, uh, not only to uh, the infrastructure in Ukraine, but to innocent civilians as well. So, Congressman, uh, finally, we're well, it's about seven, eight hour, seven hours away from a State of the Union address. You'll be there in that chamber. Tell me, from the foreign relations point of view, from your responsibilities, what would you like to hear President Biden address tonight? What are we doing to, uh, to test communist China? What are we doing to compete in this great power competition that we find with one of our strongest nation adversary states? Uh, what are we going to do to help Ukraine win this war, not just slowly bleed over the uh, winter and spring? Uh, what are we doing to counter the Ayatollah from achieving a nuclear bomb? And what are we doing to k stop Kim Jong Un's, uh, you know, weaponization of nuclear uh, you know, missiles that can reach the coast of the United States? You know, David, this is becoming an increasingly dangerous world. I argue it happened primarily after Afghanistan fell because they saw us projecting weakness, not strength. And that's always a green light for our adversaries to start their more aggressive provocations that uh, have emanated just this last week with the spy balloon. Okay, Congressman, it's always a delight to have you. Good luck tonight at the State of the Union address. That's Republican Michael McCall.